Hi everybody and welcome back to Sand Injunction. This is my first update of 2020. 2020. Let's see what's been going on. Hi everybody and welcome to the very first uh, update for Sand Injunction of the year. Now, before I go any further, I must say I apologize for all the howling wind. I'm filming this on the very day that that storm has decided to hit the country and cause mayhem outside to many areas. And I do hope that all of you have escaped any problems. But with all that said and done, let me explain what's been going on in the last month or so since Christmas. Not a lot, I've got to say. There are a lot of plans afoot and uh, I have been busy doing other things related to the channel, related to Sand Injunction, but not directly on the layout itself. But there are one or two things in hand that I will tell you about now. So, okay, what's been going on? Well, for the last couple of weeks or so, I, I as many of you know, I had a shed built out the side, and it's only a very small one, didn't have a lot of space. And in it, all my weathering went. I needed to get all of that out of here so that there were no after sprays or horrible things going on with my trains on track or anything else including my painting because this is where I paint as well so I took it all outside but as lovely as that was the, the little bit of space that I had was very very confining I did a few weathering jobs for other people but I just found that the whole thing was too tight and I couldn't move around or juggle or do anything really any sense but what I've got is my gallery in Hyde. Now, out the back is a 20 foot by 10 foot storage, which is, it's been used lots of times for different things, but it really has become quite a glory hole. And it really stores all my paintings, among other things, as well as my printing and all bits and pieces like that. And it's also where my students go to make coffee and tea and all those things. But there is about two thirds of it that could have been sorted out to make it much, much more effective. So I had this brilliant idea. I don't know if it's brilliant or just stupid or harebrained or whatever. But I had this idea to actually build something in the front of shop that would take all my paintings, put behind a curtain and look good and get rid of all the mess out the back. And that's what I've been doing. And I've also rejigged everything in the back and I've taken everything that was in the shed, weathering wise, my airbrushes, all my uh, flocks and um, bits and pieces that I've created, everything. It's all down there, it's all set up. I've got benches down there, I've got a table, I can film, I've got space to do all these things. And that really is absolutely fantastic. And with that said and done, I actually weathered my very first loco uh, just yesterday. It's one that it's brand spanking new that I bought from Kerno recently, and it's going to be going back out on eBay, but completely different to the normal box standard uh, locomotive that you see out the box. So hopefully uh, I can get into doing more of that and to doing more uh, weathering for other people which I've also been doing as well. So with all that said and done that phase of everything is now finished and I can actually build dioramas, weather an airbrush and do all these things without messing up the space in here and also have the space to do it in a nice environment. So my shed now is going to become the glory hole I'm afraid. But that's all said and done. What's been going on in here? Well, I will swing the camera around at the moment, but those of you who've been following the channel will know that I did do the uh, mimic panel for the uh, Ashford station, but on it was the turntable section, which is fine, no problems with that. But we got that and all ready to go. Now the turntable is not in place yet, and that's what I'm working on now. But the um, push button system has been improved upon. So what's meant to be the, what was there is now going to change. I'm going to leave it all functioning because it's all working for the station right now. But I have actually, uh, with the help of uh, DCC Concepts, we have created this new uh, plan. This new uh, sorry, I covered myself. <laughs> this new plan here 
which is showing a slightly increased diameter um, circle but instead of just having one row of buttons around it's actually got lights which are green red on off so we will know which one of these are in operation with the ADM turntable and they will be uh, obviously red off green on and also these are all the tails and on this feeder this feeder and this feed track you will see two sets of lights and two buttons one of these buttons will be red as all of these are and one will be green and that is so that we can direct the turntable to go to the head or to the tail on these three feeders but only on the tails to the rest of it there's no need to feed head wise to those just on these in and out uh, lines so that's what we've done and I've got as far as I can show you that I've punched out all the holes as you can see ready to drill through the board and to start putting all this together once that's done I will glue this to the board let that set up and dry off and hopefully then I can start putting over all the electronics that I've already done in the other one if I'm very careful I do a bit at a time I shouldn't have a lot of problems when it comes to really setting it up then comes the, the bigger issue is I've got all of this to set up with two new alpha mimics to go in to feed these lights so that's why this box is slightly deeper at A3 it's the same length but it's slightly deeper at A3 to accommodate the extra units because the first box it worked very well but it was really on the tight side and I felt that by adding two more there was no option but to make this whole thing bigger and the same size in fact it's the same size as the marshalling yard one behind me which I'll quickly show you again in a moment just to uh, remind you of it so that's what I've been doing and uh, I've got all of this to do it's one of those jobs that you know you've got one done already and it's working and you're so reluctant to spend that precious time to do it all over again and I, you know I, I know that it's got to be done but I so want to get on with some other things on, on track and to that end I have been looking at doing the um, turntable itself I'm going to swing the camera around now and show you what, what I'm on about okay guys so this is the ADM turntable move the track out of the way and you've seen this plenty of times in previous videos uh, it's not functioning it hasn't been functioning I have just today trimmed the first of the feeder line into it here and just tape it off the edges and feather them off I use the Dremel for that I'm always skeptical about using the Dremel but it does seem to me to be the best way of doing things and um, you will see that there is white card under here and what happened was that when I put this in on onto the 12 mil uh, ply this baseboard from ADM is just ever so slightly deeper uh, than this and because of that there was this little lip and so when I put the cork in the cork I seem to remember is three mil I'm not too sure I can't remember but whatever it is it was again just a mil or not even a mil higher now as you can see here there is just a little very faint lip so putting a one mil piece of card in here brought the thing absolutely spot on level and to the edge of this and this actually can be raised or lowered accordingly okay so the turntable itself I've got to start fitting this up purely and simply because the new mimic panel which I would like to get sorted out and finished off for Ashford Station it's been revised as I have told you and uh, I want to make sure that we can get it all sorted out so it does necessitate uh, finishing off this area here and making it active and uh, the ADM turntable is a marvelous piece of kit and if it's affordable to people I would just say don't hesitate uh, it's a great piece of stuff and although it 
I needed to do a RAM raid to afford it. Uh, I did push myself to get it and I'm very, very glad that I did. Now that all said, it's got to be set up properly and I want to, the, none of these tracks are in place yet. I've started to do this. Now, what I did have was a shed that I built. Now it's got one or two issues with it and that's down to me, um, bad building, bad whatever, but it, it's sort of warped or it's changed shape and it's not, it's scooped in there despite trying to keep it out. But as I say, I've cracked it, I've broken it and um, it really does need addressing. But that all said, I felt that I didn't want to spend tons of money on three loco sheds. So I want one here, three road, a three road over into that corner and three roads somewhere here. And I have another couple of these ready to go, but they, I feel, this one goes in here, okay, and I've set the track up so it will run off. That's good. They're not set up, but they've got to turn. But they will run off and go into this 400 millimeter long uh, shed. That's fine on this one. But over here, I put this over here, there's just not enough for this to come off satisfactorily and even though the sheds that I've got into this in this position are only 360 uh, millimeters long I still feel that at 360 millimeters that's just too long a shed so I had the decision what do I do as best I can I think over time I'm going to scratch build it so I'm making a template out of paper here so that I can gauge where these tracks need to be set uh, certainly from the point of view of entry so that they go around through any pillars and then set them down and get them working and then later on when time allows and I'm much further into the uh, build of sand injunction I can then start scratch building or kit bashing something else that will work in here and as somebody suggested on a comment through Model Rail Network, or Network Model Rail, sorry, I could get that wrong. Uh, someone suggested that, you know, by scratch building it or kit bashing it, I can pretty much do what I want to work with my layout. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, and Ashford had a large north light shed, and I feel that I really wouldn't mind doing a north light shed here. Now I'm not going to get one big long run, I think they had a 10 road shed, it was massive. Okay, just a little update. What I've done is I've taken a footprint off of the Metcalf uh, 2 road. I've just gone over half of it to give me a single road. And this is actually the footprint off of the Hornby one, which always can be adjusted, not a problem. And this is the same size as the Hornby, but the same width as that. So what I thought of is that by doing it this way, I've got a template that I can set the track down. That's not a problem. And I can get some idea of how these will sit, how they will work. And I get my three road shed by scratch building the uh, double and then putting an extension for a smaller loco. That should take an 060 with tender, um, having measured up a couple of bits and pieces. Um, a diesel shunter, whatever I want to put into these little sheds and have a couple of them sitting on the outside uh, in the rain and snow and um, I think it gives me a little bit of space to add some trees and some scenery maybe up at the back there some tall pieces um, raising up so it gives it some height
Okay, welcome back and you join me as I've been really working on the turntable and I've also done a bit of work behind me as well. And what I've been doing is setting up the roads for the ADM and I've got these two tracks that are in and the two here are also in. And the programming has been done for these, although just to test it, but everything is working fine. This is been moved from one to the other and it's working fine so that's great great testament to a great building uh, from Alistair ADM turntables I've got to say I first I made these like one and a half of one so you've got one full length and a half shed on the side um, they were going to be based on the uh, the Metcalf kit that I had and that's what I measured them on. But actually I've decided to change that completely and I'm going to go and use the CK12, I think it's called, from Wills, the Wills North Light Shed. And I'm going to basically buy several of them and kit bash the heck out of them and um, scratch build quite a bit of it and to see how I can come up with sheds that are a longer and also half of one on the side the same over the back there and a three row one over here and i'll show you in a little while the great big one that's being planned for the tmd so they're all going to be north light they were the sheds that predominated in uh, the ashford works as as best as i can work out Okay, swinging over here. Now, what's been going on in this area? Quite a bit, actually. First and foremost, originally, the track went up to here. When I first did this table, that was the end of the table. That's where it came to it. And I decided to put all of this TMD area in, and I wanted somewhere to put that. So what I did do then is I extended it to here, put these areas in, and, of course, I was using this fellow here which was going to be my engine shed for the diesels now that was all very very good but I suddenly realized that I can't put a 416 in or a multiple unit two car multiple unit like the two bill or two how later on I needed a double width so this is gone this is going to go this will actually be used in another area uh, which will have a small shed in it somewhere on one of the other stations. So what I've done is I've put a new um, piece of board in and it's been sculpted a little bit around here because the idea is that we will put a shed that starts here and goes all the way down to here and that will allow me two cars. But this will have a third area. So there was the original shed. It will go from here, uh, which is just off camera, you can just see my thumb, <laughs> and it will go back to about there, which is going to be 25 inches long, and that will take two cars, and they will disappear inside the shed. That's quite nice. But what I'm going to be doing also is I couldn't put the full width of a shed here because it will clash with this line. I couldn't move this one to here because it's already as close as it can be. So by bringing this back to here, it gives a bit of a staggered interest to the shed build itself. And I can bring it back to here, which will be just short of where this one will come to. But I will have it open-ended so a train can come down through and for whatever reason I'm not sure yet but it can go all the way out to here and uh, go through that shed uh, open-ended I'm not quite sure why an engine would have gone all the way through a shed I know there are many sheds out there that have open ends or doors each end of the shed so for one reason or another and I'm sure there's somebody out there that can enlighten me why engines would have gone straight through the shed and come out the back uh, let me know uh, you know the normal way in the comments section let me know why and that would be great but I'm modelling it anyway I thought it would be nice so the um, the again it's going to be 
coming down to about here, I think. And that gives me a little bit of scenics around here. This road will come down to about here and finish. So again, I can store more locos here, giving me rough ground interest, maybe a little bit disused area here, which would be a lot of fun to model and, and scenic up later on. And of course, around here, I can put a nice backdrop, give myself a nice camera angle for our filming. And I can have this area here, which will again have... Uh, bits of information it's even possible I don't know if it if it would have happened again I need somewhere to build a refuel now it seems a bit of a, a long shot to uh, have an engine come all the way down here through a shed just to get refueled uh, with diesel but you can tell me and I'm sure somebody out there would know if that is a feasible thing to build a refueling section at the back here uh, bearing in mind that it's got to come through a shed to do that it may be that this is a great place to do a refueling area I can build it all the way through and maybe leave this side of the shed off it doesn't have to go in but it might allow me to put uh, some of the I've got two nightwing kits to build so it could be that I can put a very large refueling area through here and forget the third element of the shed. So two, it may be only two, but it will be from here to here. It'll be north lights and it will be built out of the um, wheels kits. And I think having just talked to you guys, this area does seem possible to put in my night wing area and have a very filthy but potential um refueling area for my diesels to come to but can i do it and have that shed on the side you be the judges Okay everybody, welcome back. And this is the completion, certainly of one bit, of a job that I've been wanting to get done for a very long time. Um, ever since I put this ADM turntable, or at least made the hole and put it, laid it in here ready to use, I have wanted to get track up to it, but I wasn't sure where I was gonna put sheds, how I was gonna put them in and all the rest of it. Well, in the last week or so, I have decided how that is going to happen. Okay, there you go. All sorted. Uh, I hope. I think I took a lot of time this morning getting these pretty much square on so that these will uh, be able to be programmed in. And there is, on most of it, a little bit of wiggle room where I can just slide the track forward and backward. i tell you something I did do in here. Uh, when I had this on my old layout um, on No Name Junction, and it was set up with, I don't think as many tracks around it, but there, it was certainly set up. And I came in one day and started it off, and it was on a hot summer's day, and I didn't even give a think about uh, track or rail um, expansion. Or contraction come to that and I suddenly had a situation where this was catching all my tracks and I thought oh my god what, what am I gonna do what's gone wrong and the first thing I stupidly did is <laughs> I got the Dremel out and started chopping little bits off and of course when that all changed then they were all too short so I had a real big lesson learned then and uh, so what I've done, there is the exception that I can't do it to these tracks here or here, and not to the ones easily where there are rail joiners, but all the, I've tried to make all of the other single pieces, and it's been a little bit, you know, instead of using off cuts of track to make this, I've actually used fresh track to do the job. But it does mean to say that I drilled some slightly bigger holes here to take the dropper wires, and they're a lot bigger than I would normally do, but the reason for that is a very simple one, that there's a bit of movement in this cable, so that if this does expand a little too far one way or this way, it this will help, 
and I can just gently prise the tracks forwards and backwards um, to give a little bit of easement on here and I don't have a buckling and I don't have any hindrance over the uh, track on the um, centerpiece. So that's why I did it. Uh,